Welcome to ArcPoint, my name is Marcus. Sorry this one took so long. I'm a fish out of water when it comes to networking and the like, but by the end of this video you should have some idea of what the different networked contexts in Core are about. First off, we'll be doing a really quick overview of how a multiplayer game works, at least conceptually, and then going into further detail about the five networked contexts you'll see in Core. So when you're playing a multiplayer game, you're running a copy of the game on your computer. In our case, it's the blue computer. And then what you're doing is connecting to the core servers, uh, which in case is the, over there in the orange. And then everyone else's computers, uh, they're in the purple. So what occurs is you're playing the game, and it's a constant stream of information going towards servers, and constant information coming back from the servers. So you might be giving out information such as where you are in the world, your inventory, how much currency you have, and then what you're receiving it consists of stuff such as where everyone else is, do you have the correct amount of things in your inventory, any updates, that kind of stuff. And so what occurs on your local computer is client context. What occurs on the server computer, or server side, is server side. So the five contexts in core we have are the normal context, networked context, client context, server context, and the static context. You can tell what context an object belongs to by looking in the hierarchy at the addition to the name in brackets such as a networked object having networked in brackets after the name. Default context will have no such addition to the name, and for some weird reason neither will static context, but anyway. So when you drag an object into the scene from core content, normal context is the default context it will be placed into. Objects in a normal default context are able to have play collision, but cannot be moved through code or otherwise. So this context is good for non-moving objects, where you still need player collision, such as an environment the player will be running around, or the wall of a castle, that kind of environmental thing. Uh, additionally, normal context is not ran on the client side. And for clarification, whenever I say player collision, I'm talking about the player being able to stand on the object and not fall through kind of collision. If I'm talking about triggers, I'll specify. For moving objects, you're going to want a networked context, which can be done by selecting your object, right-clicking in the hierarchy, and selecting Enable Networking. An object in networked context can have player collision, and is also able to be moved around. This, however, comes at a performance cost. Uh, so to explain, with default context, Core does not expect the object to move around, so it doesn't bother checking its constant position. But with a networked object, Core checks and stares at that networked object to see if any properties have changed. Uh, on the plus side, uh, this means networked objects can be modified by code, which means they can move, scale, and do all the fun stuff, while also still having collision the player can collide with. A networked object is also at the same place and time for everyone. But on the downside, keeping a track of so many networked objects can cause performance to take a hit. So you don't want to go overkill on the number of networked objects you have in your project at a time. Uh, you'll want to use a networked object for moving objects you want the player to collide with and be consistent between all players, uh, such as a moving obby platform or doors that can be opened and closed and stop the player from moving through. Next we have the client context, which behaves similarly to a folder or group. So to place an object in client context, you're going to want to select the object in the hierarchy, and then open up Create Network Context, and select Client Context. You'll then want to ensure that your object is a child of that context. Objects in a client context can move just like a networked context, but cannot have player collision. Client context only occurs on the local computer, and does not sync up with other players and is not consistent between different people playing the same game. Uh, for example, if I have two players playing the game and an object set to move after one to three seconds, chances are they're going to move at different times for each player. 
But an upside is that there's also no networking lag, so movement and animations in a client context is going to run as smooth as butter. Client context is good for decorative movements that don't impact gameplay, such as a helicopter buzzing around the map or the special effects of picking up a piece of loot. Additionally, they're also great for single-player games and local player-specific mechanics such as the user interface or a 3D text that always faces the local player. On to server context, which just like client context, can be created by right-clicking, opening create network context, and selecting the server context. Uh, the server context occurs entirely on the server side, and anything in here will appear invisible to the player because the client computer does not see it at all. Unlike scripts in a client context, which can be seen by a player using software, scripts in a server context will not be exposed to the player while they play the game, making it a great place to store scripts that contain currency and items. Something to note is that a player can collide with a trigger on server context, but you cannot have an interactable trigger in a server context. And by interactable trigger, I mean the setting where you walk into the trigger and then you press F to interact. Not 100% sure where that would be useful, but the more you know. Static context. Static context is interesting. So it has play collision, and like the default context, it's not specifically on the client or server side. But if you enable networking on the static context, and there are children objects underneath it, it only counts as one networked object, and you can move around the context, which is pretty neat. Uh, the catch is, objects that are children of a static context are never expected to move independently of the parent static context. In terms of movement, they might as well be superglued to the parent folder. Uh, you can, however, create and delete objects individually in a static context. Also, if you have a script in static context, it'll be on the server and the client side, but independently of each other. It, it can get pretty messy fast, however, as it can easily cause desyncing issues. So for a recap, normal context has collision, can't be moved, and is great for building up the environment. Networked context has collision, can be moved, can drag down performance a bit, and is great for collision that is consistent between all players like a platform or door. Client context has no collision, can be moved, and is inconsistent between all players like a user interface or decorative items. Server context has no object collision, occurs isolated from the client, and is a more secure location for scripts handling important stuff. And static context has collision, can move when networked, great for reducing networking of large static objects that won't move separately of the parent. Hopefully that gives some idea of what the networked context are used for. Feel free to ask questions in the comments section below, although I can't promise I'll have an answer, but I'll try. And with any luck, I'll revisit this topic in the future when I know a bit more. But for now, I shall see you in the next video. Arc point out.